Hello everybody! Benvenuti nella mia cucina. Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Laura and today I'm gonna tell you what to do with the package that you receive from Procter and Gamble. So actually this video is made for all you people that work here in Albany at Procter and Gamble and receive this package. Before looking at the content, let me start with one thing that is inside the package. So you see you have a wooden spoon. So this is a tool that of course is useful in the kitchen, but the reason why we put a wooden spoon is because the name of my business is the Italian wooden spoon and what I do I uh, normally do cooking classes now in this period I'm doing virtual cooking classes uh, delivering ingredients at people house so pretty much what I'm doing with you guys uh, but normally I do cooking classes where people can come and here in Albany I do at the Pool Brothers showroom I also do them in Tifton at uh, Conger El Pigas and in Thomasville at Bobby Dollar. So if this is gonna be over and we're gonna start back doing regular classes, please come and visit me because for me having a relationship with the people is way better than doing virtual. But you know, we just get adjusted and for now we just get virtual. If you want to sign up to some of my virtual classes or if you wanna have all the recipes or that I normally share on my cooking class, you can go on italianwoodenspoon.com and uh, also on Facebook, Italian Wooden Spoon, or on Instagram, Italian Wooden Spoon. Normally, when I start my cooking classes, I said, uh, This is my accent, I'm really from Italy, I'm not faking. And what I do is I share, I share the passion for the food that uh, my family gave me when I grew up and uh, also I share authentic recipe. Another reason why you have a wooden spoon on your package that some of you has a spoon, some of you has a spatula, but anyway they're all wooden uh, is because normally when people come to my cooking class this is the certificate of attendance and I always like to tell this little story and then I'm gonna start cooking I promise the story is that when I started doing this business, I was um, in private house. Uh, I still go on private house. I used to live in Texas before. And when I go to private house, normally I don't bring everything. I mean, I'm thinking that people have the basic tool. So I asked for a wooden spoon. And the lady told me, I'm sorry, we don't have a wooden spoon. We have a plastic or a silicone. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it, whatever. Then getting out from the house, it was one of my first experience on this job about 10 years ago. I thought, uh, in Italy, you can be out of toilet paper, but everybody have a wooden spoon. So, well, now maybe somebody can be out of toilet paper. I'm not saying nothing about that, but now you at least have a wooden spoon in your house. <laughs> So this is the certificate of attendance for making one of my classes. So I hope to meet you personally soon. And uh, in the meantime, I'm just gonna tell you, let's cook together and buon appetito. So one of the essence of the Italian cuisine is to use few ingredients, but good quality ones. So with this package, we want to show you the essence of the Italian cuisine. You don't have to have three gazillion of different things, but just three or four ingredients. Let's start and see what's inside the bag. So, you have one yellow onion. Some of you, they have big ones, some small, but anyway, everybody has yellow onion. You have Luigi Vitelli, Italian peeled tomatoes, very good tomato sauce, and one of the best pasta that you can find, and uh, some of you have cavatelli, and some of you have strozza preti, but they are exactly the same brand, top quality. And then you have a bag of Parmigiano cheese. What you don't have on that bag that you need for a recipe, but I hope everybody has some, is some extra virgin olive oil. 
If you don't have extra virgin olive oil, you can use olive oil. If you don't have olive oil, you can just use oil that you have on your pantry. And I'm gonna tell you now exactly what to do step by step. So, first of all, we're gonna move the ingredients on the sides because we have to chop the onion. This is something that I tell people, you can chop the onion how you are used to, or I'll show you how I do. Um, so it's not difficult, but there's a couple of things that I like to share with you. First of all, when you have a vegetable, the raw on your cutting board, the first things you wanna do is secure your vegetable. So if it has a sphere um, shape like this one, you wanna cut the onion this way in order to secure the onion on your cutting board. Now they're secure. Now, as you can see, there's a hairy part and there's a part that is, doesn't have anything. The hairy part, you never, never took it out until the end. That's to make it, the things easy. So you took off the first part here. You peel like a couple of layers until you see plain white. Here we go. Now, with this still attached, you start cutting lines that are perpendicular on, of the, on the onion's natural lines that are created. So with a sharp knife, you just do this and try to be as much as you can parallel with one line to the other one and the same distance as much as you can. So in that way, you never go all the way through, see? You start right there, kind of half an inch from the hairy part that is still together. Now what you got? Your onion is still all together. Now you take your knife and you go on the other direction. So what's gonna happen is that the onion is already naturally cut on the other side. So in this way you have a chopped onion without having, you know, to chop all around. So you have almost perfectly pieces of square that is a chopped onion. By the way, all this stuff, I'm not gonna throw it away. What I normally do, I save it on a Ziploc and I put it in the freezer. So the first time you have to uh, do a broth, for example, you can use this. Unless it has mold, of course you want to throw it away, but if not, you just use it. So now this was a big onion, so I just used half. Some of you have smaller onions, so you can use it all. I mean, there's no right or wrong way to do it. If you like onion, go for it. Uh, I'm just gonna use half for now. So I'm here at the stove now. I have two pots, uh, one with water, a lot of water. Consider that package of pasta that you have it's for a good five portion and when you cook pasta you always want to have a lot of water if you use small amount of water that's the best recipe to have an overcooked mushy pasta so you want to have a full pot of water that now is boiling so I'm just taking a little bit low and here you have a skillet now, as I said at the beginning, you need an ingredient that is not on the bag. So if you happen to have extra virgin olive oil at your house, you use this. Or if you have olive oil or any other kind of oil. Now, what I want you to do is to create a coat here on the pan. It's not a lot. This is like a super slow dough. Hold it. 
is kind of softened. At this point, it's time to add the tomato. Now, these tomatoes are whole peeled. You can see they're Roma tomatoes and they are peeled. It means, you know, they just blanch them and they can them. What I always say to my cooking class, you have to consider that these things, it's a raw vegetables, you know, not that it's bad, but what I mean is that it needs to be cooked. So when you do this, there's only one secret about making a good pasta sauce, is to have the tomato sauce reviews. That means, that we're just not gonna cook this by the time that the pasta cook. Oh no. If you had a chance to do this in advance, it's even better. We're gonna leave this now on a low setting of your stove for at least 20, 30 minutes. Yes, 20, 30 minutes. Now, first of all, you see how it's liquid now? It's very liquid. The tomatoes are still whole. So I'm just kind of breaking them down a little bit with the spoon and I'm mixing with the onions. You want this sauce to kind of simmer because it needs to reduce. So all the liquid has to evaporate. At this point, you just need to wait. So what I normally put on top, because I like to cook, but as I think everybody listening, I don't like to clean up my stove. <laughs> so what I do, I take a splash card and I put it on top. So if you have something like this in your house, that's the time to use it. You just put it on top. As you can see, it's simmering very low. Don't worry if all the tomatoes are not all break down because they will eventually when this is gonna cook. So I'm just gonna put it like that for about 20, 30 minutes. Okay, at this point we're 20 minutes from when we put the tomatoes in. And let's take a look. You can tell that it's way less liquid and there is an easy way to see if the sauce is ready or is starting to get ready. If you trace a line in the middle of your pan, see that the line stay there's not a lot of liquid going on. There is just a little bit around here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start cooking the pasta and by the time the pasta is cooked, the sauce is ready. So we're gonna leave it like that. As you can see, I didn't add any kind of salt, any kind of spices. I have two things to tell you. One is you can add some salt if you want or you can add saltiness adding a uh, bouillon. I like to use the better than bouillon. So you can use just regular salt. A pinch of salt would be enough. Or I like to do with better than bouillon. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take a little spoon, like a teaspoon,
Okay, we have a full pot of boiling, like raw boiling water here. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the salt. We could have done this before, but they say that the salted water takes longer to boil, so why wait for nothing, right? So as soon as it boils, you put salt. It's about one tablespoon per quart. But, you know, I'm going with my hand, as always. I'm gonna do just like that. And now, uh, it's time to add the pasta. So I got my pasta open. It's boiling, so I'm gonna add the pasta. The whole package is for feed five good portions, just for your information. And now we're gonna mix it, and we're gonna wait until it starts boiling again. Now when it starts boiling again, that's when you start counting the time. So in every package, they say how long you have to wait for the pasta to be al dente. I really suggest you to do al dente because that's the way you taste better the pasta. Anyway, here it says 14, 15 minutes. So we only have to wait 14 minutes and then of course we taste if it's cooked enough. We're gonna strain the pasta. We are 12 minutes now from the moment that we put the pasta in and the water started boiling. And I'm gonna taste it because I think that's gonna be enough for us. Of course, we eat the pasta al dente. Yes, it's ready. So we turn off the stove. We strain the pasta and we don't have to carry for this recipe any of the water from the cooking. So you just strain completely the pasta. So the pasta strain is strained. The pasta is strained. We're gonna put all the pasta inside the pot with the sauce and we mix together. Beautiness. At this point, we can have different options. First of all, we can add uh, maybe a little bit of olive oil, that's gonna help. help. Then, if you have some fresh basil, you can put a couple of leaves now, so just like that. But the important thing you have to do is to add the parmigiano cheese. So you take the grated parmigiano cheese that I give you and you put all in there. And you mix very well. This is gonna add also some saltiness to your pasta. At this point, it's ready to serve. Now, if you like spicy, and people from the south of Italy, they definitely do that. You can add some um, spicy red pepper flakes or some cayenne, red cayenne pepper, uh, or just pepper if you like it. In my family, we just like it like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on plate. But first, I'm gonna taste it. Mmm, guys. It's delicious. That like, feel at home away from home. Buon appetito. Okay guys, well, thank you so much for uh, joining me in my kitchen tonight. I hope you enjoy your pasta. Um, I just want to thank Procter & Gamble once again to give me the opportunity for uh, doing this for you and to share the heritage and my passion for my food. If you have any question, you can reach me on my email that is on the recipe. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and visit the website to stay updated with all my cooking classes. Thank you. Ciao, ciao.